Here in America, the Lexus GX is one of the company's most popular body-on-frame SUVs, and for 2024, it finally gets the redesign that it has desperately needed for years. I'm here on the show floor of the 2023 LA Auto Show, and this right here is the 2024 Lexus GX 550 Luxury Plus. Let's take a first look. So for 2024, the GX is getting a very comprehensive redesign, and of course it starts with a new name. So before we start talking about the exterior styling changes, let me go ahead and pop the hood and show you guys what's powering a GX 550. Now you might be inclined to think that it's a 5.5 liter V8. Sadly, the V8 is gone. It's been replaced, of course, by the new corporate 3.4 liter twin turbocharged gasoline direct injection V6. Now in the 550, it makes less horsepower versus in the LX600. We have 349 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque. Those are healthy figures. The horsepower is a little bit lower versus the LX, but the GX, remember, slots below that. It's connected to a 10-speed automatic transmission with Lexus's full-time four-wheel drive system. You can also get an electronic locking rear diff if you guys go for the new overtrail trim level. Lexus basically says this model is good for up to 17 MPG combined. There also will be a hybrid version coming. However, the hybrid, Lexus hasn't, uh, hasn't been ready to divulge details on it yet. I suspect that should improve the fuel economy even further, getting us closer to that 20 MPG mark. This particular model here, the, the Plus, the Luxury Plus can tow around 6,780 pounds. I suspect the new GX is probably going to come in at just under 6,000 pounds. That'll likely be for the hybrid, but remember, this vehicle here, here is significantly larger versus the previous generation. But let's go ahead and close up the hood. Now, we actually already did a first look video where we had our good friend Burn from Burn on Cars actually film this car at the reveal. But since this is my first time seeing the GX in person, I have to say, when I first saw this vehicle in the photos, I absolutely fell in love with the design of the new GX. I've already shown you guys a review on the Land Cruiser, and I personally think the GX looks better. You can see the front fascia has the new Lexus design language here with their corporate spindle grille. It's got these full LED headlights, which as you can see, have the individual triple LED or LEDs where you have that LED daytime running light and turn signal. You have some fake and functional vents. You can see I really like how this vent here actually kind of continues on. It almost looks like it's part of the headlight. Uh, and you also have some LED fog lights down here. This beautiful eminent white pearl exterior color looks fantastic with the gloss gray uh, metallic silver accents. The over trail trim will give you a slightly uh, more aggressive front bumper where it actually improves the approach angle and also gives you some skid plates. This model here is the more luxury oriented trim, so it's going to give you a little bit less uh, in terms of off-road capability. But moving around the side profile of the GX, you can see this model here is significantly larger versus the previous generation. The Overall length, Lexus says, has been increased by nearly three inches to just over, or just under 195 inches long. The wheelbase is also around two and a half inches longer. The width of this car, however, is significantly wider. Nearly four inches wider versus the previous generation. It gives it, again, a more aggressive body-on-frame stance. This is still, again, a body-on-frame SUV where it's built on the TNGAF truck platform which is nice. The overtrail is around four and, a half, four and a half inches wider as well. Now looking at the wheels, I actually haven't seen these wheels yet in person. These are a 22 inch wheel that you get with the Luxury Plus trim. I love the way they look with the multiple spokes and the uh, uh, machine finish with the gray inner pockets. Uh, it's riding on a 265 by 50 R 22 inch wheel. So these are obviously a more street oriented tire. Uh, Lexus does offer an 18 inch wheel with an all terrain tire on the overtrail model, but this is gonna be the one that most of the people who are gonna just drive these on the streets, go into your mall, go into your work, or go into your school, uh, are gonna be driving this kind of look. Now, um, the rest of the body lines, you can see very boxy. I love the boxy proportions because remember, this shares a platform with the new Toyota Land Cruiser. This is what it's based upon. You can see uh, the 550 Plus in the Luxury Plus trim includes basically the, the blacked out accents here for the window trim. You can see you have these skinny roof rails that are more aerodynamic. And then this model here has a big panoramic glass roof, which I wasn't expecting to find, but it's great to see that Lexus is throwing in those upgraded features. The roof itself doesn't actually open up to vent air, but it also has that uh, electrochromatic finish where you can tint and frost and defrost the actual roof line or the roof glass. Now looking at the rear of the vehicle, you can see that signature Lexus design theme is carrying over with the full LED light bar that goes across. You can see Lexus is now spelled out in the back as opposed to having the Lexus logo. And then you can see it says GX 550. So you can't really tell that this is the luxury plus trim. Lexus instead uh, doesn't put those actual badges on the back. You can see underneath here, this is the cover that's covering up the tow hitch 
um, which again, this vehicle here can tow a maximum of 8,000 pounds or 6780 on this particular trim here. Uh, and you can see the rear glass hatch area still opens up in a separate manner, which is nice if you wanna kinda of get some stuff out here without opening up the entire hatch. However, the side opening gate has been removed. It's been replaced, of course, by a conventional lift gate, which I actually really appreciate because uh, this kind of shields you from the weather if you guys are planning to you know, load up the vehicle and it's raining. However, the downside with the GX is if you guys are looking for maximum cargo capacity, this model here, as you can see, has the power folding third row. I don't have the final cargo figures just yet, but as you can see, this is really small. It looks like to me less than 10 cubic feet. So you're not gonna be packing that much stuff back here if you actually do uh, plan to actually carry up to seven people. Now you can fold down these seats, which as you can see are power folding. You do have to push and hold the button here to actually fold down the seat. But once you do, you can see this is how most GX owners, I imagine, are probably gonna keep their vehicles with the, the third row seat folded. This to me looks like around 35 to 40 cubic feet of space. And if you fold down everything, it should give you enough space to again, do that haul to Costco or to Ikea. But overall, if you want more cargo space, be sure to check out the Lexus TX. That's the family crossover that's gonna give you the most cargo room. Now moving into the interior of the all new Lexus GX 550, I have to say, stepping inside this vehicle, if you guys are used to the new interiors of Lexus products, this is gonna feel very familiar. And I have to say it's a huge upgrade versus the old GX. That was one of the last Lexus vehicles that still had an infotainment touchscreen that dated back to the early 2000 era. So it's really great to see that Lexus is throwing in their latest and greatest tech in this vehicle here. It's really going to improve the experience of this car. And I have to say this, um, premium or this luxury plus trim has some of the plushest seats in the industry. Now, first of all, I want to talk about the seats really quick. These are the upgraded semi-aniline perforated leather where they are heated and ventilated. The seats adjust in like 14 different ways. They feel incredibly cushy and plush. I love the contrasting stitching. This black interior, I wouldn't necessarily choose for myself, but it does, again, look great with the white exterior. You can also get, I believe, a lighter color interior, like a, a white cream or a palomino interior as well. And then the overtrail offers like a green interior. But overall, talking about the rest of the materials here, you can see the door panel has a soft touch injection molded plastic. There's some kind of soft touch plastic here and some perforated leather along with some wood. This is a padded center console area here. The window controls, they feel high quality, typical Lexus, one touch for all four. You have power folding mirrors. You have three person memory seats here on the driver's side. And then the steering wheel, you can see this is the new steering wheel that we see on a lot of Lexus. Lexus products. It has the Lexus safety system 3.0. You have a power tilt and telescoping wheel. And then finally, Lexus took forever, but they're, they're also doing a fully digital 12.3 inch display here where it's slightly customizable. This is the same display that I saw on the new Lexus TX. And then most GX models are going to have the massive 14 inch touchscreen. So finally, Lexus is doing a 14 inch touchscreen in their infotainment system here, which includes uh, wireless CarPlay and Android Auto over the air updates. As you can see, it has heated and ventilated seats, a heated steering wheel. It's all built into the screen, but you can also see it's got uh, this little display over here uh, where you can adjust the temperature. This is pretty similar to what you also see on the new Lexus NX. You can, uh, I want you to ignore this because Lexus actually took off the knobs for the volume and for the climate control because we're here at the auto show and stuff. They usually tend to do that. The dashboard you can see has a soft touch injection molded plastic. I would have preferred to see this actually stitched in leather. So I'm a little sad to see that it's not. There's a little bit of a storage shelf here. There's some aluminum look trim. This is a padded area here. Again, this could be a little bit nicer but uh, Lexus is saying their customers that they're trying to target prefer less wood and they just prefer a more cleaner, minimalistic design. Now over here on the center stack, you can see lots of buttons and knobs, traditional buttons and knobs. Your drive mode selector, as you can see, is right here. I like how it's really easy to find. Uh, you can also find uh, your stability control off switch. There's a shifter here, a traditional shifter for the 10 speed auto. There's even this ECT second button where it starts the vehicle's transmission up in second gear. This is a throwback to the original GX, which is interesting. And then over here, you can see more stitched leather going over here. There's the four wheel drive switch here with the locking center diff. You can also get a locking rear diff if you guys go for the over trail. There's a wireless phone charging pad here. Uh, and then you can see over here, there's also a little flip down lid where you can reveal your 12 volt power outlet. That's kind of an interesting design. You have a storage cubby here where you can cover up your cup holders. Uh, and then if you look over here, there's a nice padded center console. And then Lexus continues to offer their cool box where you can basically turn that into a fridge. Uh, which is great when you guys are doing those long road trips. Now above me here, you can see there's the panoramic glass roof. Right now it's unfrosted, but it doesn't actually open to vent, but it does have a retractable shade. If I push this button, you can see the roof will frost and it kind of does it in a really cool manner. Um, so that's a really cool feature. I wish it opened up to vent, but it's nice to see Lexus is kind of doing those upgraded tech features. But let's go ahead and hop into the back seat of this vehicle because I want to show you guys what the space is like. 
Now this model here has the captain's chairs. Lexus says you can take your pick between either captain's chairs or a bench. This is gonna limit the seating capacity to six, but as I get back here, you can see the leg room for somebody my height, I'm five foot seven, is pretty good. You can see closing the door, there are these manual retractable sunshades, which is nice. You have these somewhat padded area here over the door panels. It's padded over here, of course. And then you can see more of that wood grain trim. The seats themselves, they do give you the ability to recline the seats, although they don't slide forward and back. There's kind of cup holders over here. You have uh, controls, of course, for the climate control for the third row or for the second and third row. You have heated rear seats. You have two USB charging ports. I don't see the option for ventilated second row seats. That's something that a lot of the competitors are offering. So I'm sad to see that Lexus isn't doing that, but your rear seat air vents are actually located here on the ceiling along with the actual uh, LED map lighting, which all makes the interior feel a lot more open. But let's go ahead and hop into the third row because I wanna show you guys what the third row space is like. Now, getting back here requires basically pulling this lever and the seat kind of gets out of the way as Rob tries to do it himself, but you can see the third row of the GX has never been its strong suit. So. I'm not expecting anything fantastic back here, but once I get back here and basically put the seat in, the body on frame construction definitely raises up the floor. So for somebody my height, I'm five foot seven, my knees are kind of up in the air, but I have to say it's not as awful as I thought it was gonna be. Obviously the seat needs to be reclined back a little bit, but in terms of the foot space, there's a little bit underneath this seat. Uh, there's a decent amount of actual leg room. In terms of headroom space, if I sit back, my hair is not touching the ceiling, which is nice. If you're over six feet, you're not gonna like that. There's some LED lighting here, rear seat air vents, there's two USB-C charging ports, and then you can also kind of recline the seat power electrically because it has a power fold feature. And then because the vehicle uh, doesn't carry three across back here, you can only basically fit two. But surprisingly, if you need to put children back here or adults that are basically my height, under six feet, you can certainly do that in the third row of the GX for shorter trips. So with Lexus consistently doing about 30,000 units annually here in America, the previous generation GX, despite its age, was a very strong seller. So obviously the all new version of the GX is a very important addition for Lexus. And after finally seeing this model in person, I have to say they've made a lot of great changes because they moved it to the new TNGA F architecture. They've replaced that thirsty V8 with that new twin turbo V6, which in my testing, it has amazing power in the other models and also got decent efficiency. The exterior styling, I think Lexus did an amazing job at making this thing look a little, or preserving the truck-like qualities of this model, but adding a little bit more of modern touches, you know, bringing it into the Lexus family. I'm looking forward to, of course, Lexus eventually introducing the hybrid option of the new GX and the interior finally gets a huge upgrade in terms of the tech department. So Lexus did it right, and this model should become one of Lexus's best-selling vehicles. If you're looking to get your hands on the new Lexus GX, you're gonna have to wait until the early part of next year. I'll actually be driving this vehicle out in Phoenix at the in the third week of January. That's when we're finally gonna get a chance to get behind the wheel, so stay tuned for all, our, all of our coverage there uh, for the first drive video for this new GX. And if you're wondering how much is it gonna cost for this new GX, I sadly can't tell you that yet because Lexus doesn't have final pricing yet available. Now, the old GX started around just under $60,000. It went up to around 70 grand. I expect this model to be a good amount more expensive. I'm thinking maybe mid 60s to start, well over 75 to even $80,000 for the Overtrail version or this fully loaded Luxury Plus. So obviously it's gonna cost a lot more, but with all the technology, luxury, style, and capability, it's gonna be worth that extra cost. We're right on your views here at the 2023 Los Angeles International Auto Show. I'm Sophie on Bay.